Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Chainlink, which has become an asset that a lot of people really love to hate. And the reason for that is that recently, Link has been spending a lot of time stuck in ranges. We see that from May 22 all the way over to October of 2023, it was stuck in this range between roughly 9.6 and the lows of just under $5. And then it broke out. And now it's in a new range where it got up to about $22, low of about $11, but stuck in this general range for a while. So a lot of people have gotten bored and said, why should I even be following Link anymore if that's all it's going to do? One thing you have to remember, though, is that this is not unusual for Chainlink. If we just go back and look at the prior cycle, it did a very similar thing. Got stuck in a range for a long time here at the very beginning, broke out of it got stuck in a new range for a long time before finally then going up, getting stuck in another range for a little while, and then finally putting in its new all-time high up here at around $53. Then we went into the bear market and then got stuck in a range and got stuck in a range. So from that perspective, this is not really that different from last cycle. Now, volatility has decreased a little bit. The breakout did not move up as much as some of the breakouts in the prior cycle, that's to be expected because Chainlink is now a much larger market cap asset. So from that perspective, then, boring has always been the name of the game for Chainlink to some degree. It's just people kind of forget that. A lot of the people came in at these moments of big expansion in the market for Link and kind of forget these periods of boredom that defined it for a long time in its history. So what I want to do is talk about where Link might be going next, that if it's an asset worth watching and that current price action is not really all that surprising for it, where might it be going next? When might we expect that next expansion to whenever that new range is going to end up being? So I want to talk about some on-chain data for Link and then also what our models are seeing and where they think it might be going. Okay, so the first piece of on-chain data I want to talk about is the realized price for Link. Now, this is somewhat unique data that we have for Link. We're one of the few places that actually has on-chain data available for Link, and it gives us a really nice insight into the market and where market participants stand and what they might be doing as they try to navigate the market. So realized price is basically the aggregate cost basis of all link holders. So realized price is defined as the price at which a link moved. And the idea is that if a link is sold at a given price, it was then bought by someone else for that price. And that becomes that new buyer's cost basis. So when you basically aggregate or average across all of the link that have moved and what those cost bases are, you get what I'm showing you here, this total cost basis, which is basically for link holders as a group, what is their average cost basis? So you can see that in the prior cycle, link remained well above this aggregate cost basis. And it really wasn't until the bear market in this bottom range was the first time we actually fell below it. And then we actually held it as resistance multiple times before breaking above where we remain right now. So if you're going to be bullish on Link, at least from a historical perspective, you want price to be above that total realized price. And that's where we stand right now. We dipped a little bit below. Now we're above. And generally speaking for assets like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, being below this level has historically been a good value zone for those other assets. So if Link is going to continue to go up and set new all-time highs, a similar dynamic might play out where anytime you're below that level is a particular value zone. And then when you get above it, that's when you then go on those bull runs to all-time highs. So I'll have to see if this time is the same. Link has been able to hold above it so far. We'll have to see if it can continue to do so and move up further. But it's very possible that like those other assets, being below that total cost basis might act as a reasonable value zone. So far, so good for this cycle. But we can also look at other realized prices. So what I'm showing you here now is basically the short-term holder cost basis to find as anyone who's been holding link for less than 180 days. And so this is useful because oftentimes, again, when you reference other assets, it acts as an important barometer of where are we in the shorter term context. Basically, are short term holders in profit or in loss as a group? If price is above, that means it's a group they're in profit. Below means that they are in loss. And generally speaking, in bull markets, you like to see the price be above that level. 
Now, with Link, it tends to be a little bit less important than with some other assets. With Bitcoin or Ethereum, for example, you'll often see this level act as a very su important support or resistance zones in bull and bear markets. With Link, it's a little bit less clear how important it is. It seems like price likes to chop above and below it quite a bit. But it is still a useful level to keep in mind because it basically suggests our short-term holders in loss, and then that means that if price rallies back up to that level, they might be tempted to get out at break-even. And then also, if price is above and it comes back down to that level, maybe they see that as a value zone to step in and buy more. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But really, the way it tends to play out in these ranges is that you'll find that short-term holders end up having a cost base that's somewhere in the middle, meaning that short-term holders are kind of just buying somewhere in this range, and that's generally where their cost basis is, about the kind of average level there. And then it's only when you get those expansions when you really elevate above that level. Likewise, in bear markets, really when you break down below a range, that you go into these levels of staying well below it. So I think with the link, it's a little bit less useful of a metric to watch, or at least it's a little bit less diagnostic than some others. So I still think it's useful to watch just to get a sense of where our short-term holders, because again, if we get into a situation of mass panic in the markets and short-term holders are near break even, they might just dump it to get out at that point. And so it's something that I think can be useful to watch. But I do think that overall, the total realized price might give us a better sense of in the long term, where are we from a value perspective. Another useful way of assessing link holders actual activity is to look at what are they doing? Are they realizing profit or are they realizing losses? And that's what this metric is telling us. This is telling us across the entirety of link holders, what amount of profit taking is happening and what amount of realized loss is taking into what degree is that happening. So what you'll notice is that in bull markets, especially when you go on these big rallies, you'll tend to see these spikes in profit taking basically people who had bought Link at lower levels are deciding to take their profits after the rally is concluding. And you'll see that throughout bull markets. Then going into bear markets, you'll tend to see the opposite where you have these big spikes in losses that are realized as people are capitulating and dumping Link that they had bought at higher prices. Now, what you can see more recently is that it looks like we've re-entered that kind of bull market behavior like we've seen in the past where people who bought Link at lower levels are realizing profits as we got up into this next range higher. Now, when we look at this, there's two different ways that we can think about this. So one would be, is this getting unsustainable? Are people taking too many profits, meaning that we're gonna be tiring out the market and we aren't gonna be able to sustain further moves up? Or is this just normal behavior like we've seen in the past en route to a higher level, at which point we'll finally get to that point where the selling pressure is too high and prices will go down. Now, one of the ways I like to look at this is actually looking at a moving average of that metric. So this is the 90 day moving average of it. And it gives us a sense of how much over a longer time period profit is being realized. And then also basically capitulation on the other end. So see that last time we got pretty elevated here as we got up to the all time high, a lot of profit taking happening as we got up to there. And then we kind of went down into more capitulation territory into the depths of the bear market. Now, more recently in this run up, we did see a notable uptick in profit taking in aggregate. And that's something similar to like we've seen mid cycle before for Link. But now it's cooled off and we're actually roughly around zero, around neutral, meaning that people are kind of taking losses and taking profits at about an even clip, about an even ratio of those two behaviors. So one of the ways you can look at this is that, you know, maybe you could say, well, this is it. This was the sell pressure that was gonna happen in the cycle and we're now gonna go back down into a bear market like this. Anything is possible, but it wouldn't surprise me if we actually have one more push or a bigger push to go up to some more extreme amount of profit taking before we actually get to that unsustainable level. So obviously that's speculation and it will really depend on the broader markets. If we see a broader equity bull market continue, if we see Bitcoin break off to new all time highs, so on and so forth, that's where I think we would likely see Link do something like this again. If broader markets were to collapse, then maybe this is exactly all that we're gonna get. But I personally am more leaning to the side of further upside being possible from this perspective than not. I think that by the time you get sell pressure being so overwhelming that it really leads into a bear market, you probably need more sustained selling pressure, especially from people who bought at lower levels than we've seen so far. But 
of course, anything is possible, but that would be my base case, not financial advice, of course. So that is an on-chain perspective of what we're seeing with the link right now. What I wanna do next is flip over to some of our models and see what they're telling us. So this is our risk model. It's our long-term upside downside potential indicator. So it cares about moves that play out over months to multiple months, the so more longer term in its time horizon. And basically higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And you see this model has done a fantastic job of navigating the link market throughout its life, telling you when to be taking profits and also when to be loading up. And what you can see is that we've gotten back down to levels that we haven't seen since this range that we were at in the bottom of the market for this cycle, really this very long, over a year long range that we were stuck in throughout this whole time. That's where we are now with Link's long-term risk. And so if history is any guide, when we've been at these levels in the past for Link, it has marked notable value zones. Though importantly, that doesn't mean we've gone ripping to the upside immediately after. And I think that's the point of markets that a lot of people tend to forget about. They want instant gratification. They want things to rip off to the upside immediately. But that's not the way that markets work. They go into these long accumulation zones before you might see that expansion unfold. And when we've seen Link be at these levels, many times in the past when it's hit those levels, it's taken a while before that upside has come, but it has come every single time in the past. So obviously that doesn't mean that the past is the perfect guarantee of the future, but historically speaking, this has been a deep value zone for Link. And so I would look at this and think that the trend is your friend. And so far that has been the case, my base case is that it will probably be the case again. Of course, assuming we avoid some big implosion on broader markets and we go into some mega bear market or something like that, I think it's more likely that we'll see the same thing play out again versus something new play out. Not financial advice, you should make of these data as you will, but that's what I'm seeing here. And so really for me, this doesn't necessarily mean that we have to have massive upside immediately, but as I said, historically speaking, these have been those fantastic zones. And a year or two from now, we, I think it's very likely we look back at this and say, well, of course this was a value zone. Look at where risk was at that point. Right now it might not feel like it, but it probably didn't feel like that either back here or back here, for example. All right, let's look at a different model now for Link. This is our forecast model for Link. And basically what this does is it gives us a probability estimate of how likely it is that the price of the given asset, in this case, Link, will be higher than it is right now, six months in the future. So for example, when it's at 0.94, it's estimating a 94% chance of upside in six months. It's all the way down at 0.08, it's only an 8% chance of upside in six months months. And you see it does a really good job of identifying when it makes sense to be bullish on Link and when it makes sense to be bearish. So this whole time through here, it was up in the bullish range. And indeed, that was the direction to be betting on for Link. But then when it fell off a cliff through here, downside was the direction it was betting on. And that was exactly right. And then as we got to the middle of this range, it flipped bullish. And indeed, it got that right. That was the time to start getting bullish on Link. And then we started moving to the upside and it remains bullish. So basically from this model's perspective, the outlook remains bullish for Link. And it doesn't mean it has to happen immediately, but it just basically, if you're gonna be picking a side, taking a direction, the model thinks it makes more sense to be betting on upside for Link right now than to be betting on downside. And I think this dovetails with what we've been talking about, that it can take a while for these things to play out. You can have these ranges, these accumulation ranges, that can play out for a while. But then at some point you get that big breakout and that makes it all worth it. And so there's a lot of frustration, a lot of consternation that happens in these zones. A lot of people get pissed off and say, why isn't it doing anything? But then of course, when it does do something, then they all get mad and say, oh, how did I miss it? How did I not see this coming? Hindsight's always 2020. But that's just the way it works. You get in these accumulation zones, but then you eventually break out and that gets rewarded. And that is what the model is currently thinking is likely for Link, that we're in this accumulation zone, but at some point we're gonna see that continued upside. So to kind of wrap us up then, when we think about this from the broader context with Link, it's behaving the way that we would generally expect it to behave. This is not unusual. And a lot of people have gotten annoyed with that, but really if they just looked at literally just the price chart, and especially if they looked at some of the on-chain data, if they look at the way that our models are seeing things, this is not unexpected at all. But it still doesn't mean that we should be necessarily bearish is what the models are suggesting, what the data are suggesting, that upside for Link is still a very real possibility. 
And so obviously it's going to be beholden to broader market dynamics. What is Bitcoin doing? What is the stock market doing? Is there a recession? Something like that. Obviously those things are going to matter. But assuming that we avoid some catastrophe in those broader markets, I still think that it's more likely than not that Link does what it has done in the past. So not financial advice, you should make of the data as you will, but I still think that that is a reasonable perspective to take on Link given the way the data are shaping up. All right, if you like the content, or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X, a lot of updates about our models and more over there. And if you view our models live for yourself on our website, PolarityDigital.io, link is in the description.